Karate friends, welcome to Classics in Color, which is normally your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts. I'm Mark Graves, and today instead I'm actually gonna just be giving my reactions, feelings, thoughts about the Discovery at Tours in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. So people have been recommending this game to me for forever and I've been kind of dragging my feet about trying it because it's one like a massive game, it's so big and I do enjoy gaming, I game sometimes but I'm not like really hardcore and also this happens to just not be my particular style of gaming so I just wasn't super excited for it although I was intrigued because obviously Greek culture and landmarks and architecture and everything sounded really cool. So then I found out that they have these things called the discovery tours where you don't actually have to play the game you can just sort of warp to different points on the map that are particularly noteworthy and wander around and explore and they have like little museum tour things that are set up for you that you can do if you want um, and I thought oh my gosh that's perfect instead of having to spend like 40 hours slogging through this thing I can just spend a couple hours looking at all the highlights um, that were all I wanted to look at anyway so that will be perfect so last week I spent like an hour or half two hours um, doing some of those and I have a few notes here that I'm just kind of gonna be informally sharing with you guys. So one criticism I had of the game, which most of you are probably gonna disagree with and that's totally fine, I'm in the wrong, <laughs> I'm cool with that, is just that I hate this particular art style. I do not like games that tried to be realistic, um, at least as far as the humans go. Like the the backdrop, like the landscapes are fine, but the humans always look like really creepy, weird, plasticky mannequins. I hate it. <laughs> I can't stand games like this. I have to play things that are more like cartoony and stylized or just totally takes me out of it. So that was something that I, I just kept like like laughing and being creeped out at all the, the people wandering around. And again, I'm sure many people do not care about that at all. Um, that's just something that, that bothers me, I guess. Although to contradict that, one thing that I really liked was that they obviously put a lot of effort into these creepy people that they had created because as you wander around, all the cities are full of them. So it's nice and it's not just a ghost town, I guess. And um, they have all kinds of different people. So they'll have street musicians that are actually singing in Greek and are playing real ancient instruments. So that's obviously pretty cool. And they have, like I said, all kinds of different people. So I noticed there were people with handicaps, people of different ages and uh, races, uh, just all kinds of different humans. So they had really put some effort into populating this world. So I had to give them credit for that. One of the very first places I went was the Temple of Asclepius. Uh, I was really excited to see what that looked like and it was a beautiful complex. I love how they did all of that. Uh, one complaint that I had was that I couldn't find the snake. <laughs> Temple of Asclepius is supposed to have this giant snake that lives in it and wanders around freely and it's very possible that I just didn't find it. I just didn't look long enough. Um, but if it's not there, that's disappointing because they did have other animals like I found horses and chickens and things so they should have put a snake in there and uh, if they did then I'm sorry <laughs> that I missed it but if they didn't then uh, that's kind of disappointing. Then I spent quite a lot of time uh, wandering around Athens, of course, uh, you have to, what are you doing if you don't? Uh, and that was really cool. The, Acro the Acropolis was beautiful and I love how they did all the colors. Everything was very, very colorful. And uh, as you know, the premise for this channel is classics in color, which basically is in reference to the fact that we have this idea that classical art is all just white marble and just clean and like pristine. Uh, but in fact, ancient art was very colorful. It was co covered in all kinds of uh, colors and it's just been lost partly to time, right? The paint washes off and partly it's been whitewashed by museum curators. Um, discussion for another day, but I love how they brought the colors back and they also did them very beautifully. Sometimes when you see people do these recreations of all the colors of the colorful statues, it's kind of ugly and garish. And I don't know if that's just like my particular taste because obviously different cultures have different ideas about what colors go together. And so maybe my brain just doesn't uh, mesh <laughs> with how the ancient Greeks and Romans saw color. I don't know, I'm not a colors expert, but I like how they honored those colors and they brought them back, but they did it in a way that was still, in my opinion, very aesthetically pleasing. And while I was in Athens, they had a little tour that was focused specifically on philosophy, so I did that. Uh, that was honestly kind of lame, I thought. Um, although not necessarily their fault, because 
other things like the Acropolis obviously are beautiful visually, but how do you, like, what do you visually show for philosophy? That's kind of hard. All they could really do was show the philosophers. And like I said, I thought all of the humans were extremely creepy and off-putting. So I didn't like the close-ups of the philosophers and they either didn't mention at all or barely like in passing mention the Epicureans and the Epicureans are my personal favorite. So I was kind of salty about that. So then I went and looked at the Olympics complex, so the Olympic Games, and that was really fun. Uh, there were like horses that you could get on and you could actually like ride the horses around the Hippodrome. That was pretty cool. And you could see the mountain in the background and all the different little stations and buildings set up for the games. I thought it was maybe a little bit too clean actually, because from what I understand of the Olympic Games, it was kind of just like camping with the bros for a month. Like it was pretty primitive and they didn't have a ton of permanent buildings set up. So I thought like maybe they made it just like a little too nice, a little too permanent, but uh, you know, you can't really get mad at them for making it look nice. And they did still have kind of that like outdoorsy feel. There were definitely parts of it that were outdoors and open. Uh, so that was a lot of fun. Uh, then I went to uh, Corinth and the temple of Aphrodite. And <laughs> that was actually kind of disappointing because I was all excited to go see the sacred prostitutes. Like, holy cow, what did they do with that? Uh, but then when you get there, there I found like some blurb or something, maybe it was part of the tour that said, there are rumors that, or some people argue that there were sacred prostitutes, but we're not sure about that. And to be fair, I haven't like looked into this uh, lately. So it could be that I'm wrong, misinformed, or that the information has changed since I've looked at this. Um, but I thought it was definitely a thing that there were sacred prostitutes <laughs> to Aphrodite and Corinth. That's like kind of their reputation as being like the, uh, uh, the red light district in Amsterdam or like Las Vegas. It's like, like kind of a party destination. Um, but again, I could be totally wrong, uh, but also maybe I thought they were like trying to uh, like clean things a little bit because I, I don't remember what it's rated. I'm assuming maybe like teen um, and maybe they're trying to not put prostitutes in their game, which fair enough. Uh, I can see why you want to make your stuff marketable to kids. Um, so if they left it out for that reason, then that, that's fine. And again, if I'm wrong, that's also fine. But I was just kind of disappointed because I was excited to see the, the sacred Aphrodite prostitutes. And the last thing I did was I went to uh, Knossos and the Labyrinth and I really liked that partly because it was so different. Like I said, everywhere else in Greece uh, was very like, vibrant and colorful, but also like maybe a little too clean, a little too shiny. Um, but when you get to the ruins, they're already like ruined. <laughs> so they're like, darker, they're abandoned, they're more mysterious. They just have a very different vibe and I thought that was very fun to have that contrast. And you get to wander around in them, climb on top of them, um, explore these tunnels and these caves. And uh, spoilers, uh, when you get to the very bottom, there randomly is actually a minotaur there, <laughs> which I hadn't seen anything mythological anywhere else. And I, I actually didn't know that there was mythological stuff in the game. I thought it was all like historical and more realistic, uh, or at least trying to be. So I was just very surprised that there's randomly this minotaur there. Um, and now I'm curious about like what other mythological stuff is in the game that, that I just missed. Um, but yeah, that was really cool. Thanks so much for checking out this review. Uh, let me know, as I said, all of the things that I got wrong and also what your reactions to this game are. You know, what do you love? What do you hate? And special thank you as always to subscribers and to Patreon members. And I hope to see all of you again soon. Karate.